Today, let's speak about when one of the prophets of God spoke of someone's incurable wounds. You'll see what I mean when I read to you today's text, Micah chapter 1, verses 8 and 9, where we read, Therefore I will wail and howl, I will go stripped and naked. I will make a wailing like the jackals, and a mourning like the ostriches. For her wounds are incurable, and it has come to Judah, for it has come to the gate of my people, to Jerusalem. He came from a village named Morasheth. In fact, he's called Micah of Morasheth in the opening verse of this book. The town was about 25 miles southwest of Jerusalem on the borderlands between Judah and the Philistines. This means that the prophet Micah was like the prophet Amos, a man from the country sent to the city to bring the word of the Lord. We really don't know anything about Micah's background or his call, but we do know that he had a strong sense of his own calling as a prophet He says so in Micah chapter 3, verse 8. We also know that he spoke both to Samaria, that's the capital of the northern kingdom of the ten tribes, and to Jerusalem, the capital of the southern kingdom of the two tribes of Israel. The latter years of his ministry were under the great reforming king of Judah named Hezekiah, but his earlier years were under two wicked kings of Judah, Jotham and Ahaz. It may be that the effective ministry of Micah during those difficult years laid the groundwork for the fruitful ministry of the better days of Hezekiah's reign. Those are the bare facts around the life and ministry of this important prophet. Yet our selected verses, Micah chapter 1, verses 8 and 9, show us the heart of a prophet. Knowing that judgment was about to come upon the people of God unless they repented, he couldn't take the news lightly. Instead, he said, I will wail and howl. Micah couldn't prophesy in a dispassionate, detached way. When he saw judgment coming upon his people, it made him wail and howl like the jackals. Do you see his heart Micah didn't just announce judgment and then yawn. He cared so deeply that he wept with God's people. This shows us that the preacher's duty is more than to just announce judgment and then walk away. He has to care. It has been said enough times to make it a cliche, but it it hints at the truth. People don't care about how much you know until they know how much you care. Micah could have come against the erring people of God with the unassailable logic of judgment, but many of those who reject a Christian's logic can be won by a Christian's tears. What made this prophet cry? He looked at the people of God and he saw her wounds are incurable. It was like looking at a person with a terrible, terminal disease, knowing that there will never be any real improvement and that the condition will just grow worse and worse until death. It would almost be better if the judgment had come and passed, but to now see it on the horizon with nothing to stop it, knowing that her wounds are incurable, that was a deep agony for the prophet Micah. What made those wounds incurable? We can say that our only incurable wounds, spiritually speaking, are the ones that we refuse to bring to God. With him, all things are possible. But when we refuse to bring our sin to him, then our wounds are incurable. In Matthew chapter 12, Jesus spoke of an unforgivable sin. He called it the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. And since the work of the Holy Spirit is to bring us to Jesus, you can find that in John 15 verse 26, among other passages. So to finally reject this work of the Holy Spirit is to finally reject Jesus, leaving our words, our wounds, I should say, incurable. This is both a comfort and a warning. The comfort is in knowing that if we will come to Jesus 
Every wound is curable, spiritually speaking. All sin can be forgiven and restoration can be made. God is in the business of making all things new. The warning is that there is definitely some wounds, spiritually speaking, that are incurable. We can't push away Jesus, have a positive mental attitude, and trust that everything is going to turn out all right. Even in the sorrow of this prophet, there's some comfort for us. We can take his sorrow over the incurable wounds of Judah, and we can let that direct us to the place where our wounds can be cured. And then we can point others there. That's a great thing for you and myself to do and to do it today.